All right, so here we're gonna be talking about um, the firework lab. We're gonna go over how to set up some of these questions. Um, I won't go over completely how to do them. You need to finish that up um, to answer them to get full credit. Um, number one is already done for you. It says this is a balanced chemical equation, so I balance this for you guys, so you don't have to worry about that. Number two, number three, and number four we're gonna do and then number five and number six are gonna come from the other video where I actually do the reaction. You're gonna try to write your observations for number five. And then number six, you're gonna try to figure out the answer to this question. Um, we haven't really talked about number six that much, so I just wanna see your thinking with this one um, and see if you're able to draw some conclusions from the experiment, all right? But don't worry too much with five and six. Um, any answer is correct as long as it's related to the experiment. All right, let's look at number two and number three. Both of these are really similar problems. So it's asking you to figure out the molar mass. This one's for the potassium chlorate, and this one is the molar mass of the sugar. So I'll walk you through how to set up number two, and then number three you'll have to try to do by yourself. So for number two, we have to find the molar mass of K, of Cl, and of O, and then we're gonna add all those up together. So if you remember to find your molar mass, you're gonna look at your periodic table, and on the element blocks, the molar mass is the bigger number that's underneath the element. So it's the number that'll be down here. So for potassium, when you look at your periodic table, it is about 39.1. So it's a big number down below. So we're gonna put that in for potassium is 39.1. If you look up chlorine, it's around 35.45, and oxygen is around 16. Now the only other special thing we have to do with this is you'll notice the oxygen has a little three by it down here. So that means we have to take our oxygen number and we have to multiply it by three to figure out the mass. So we do 16, we multiply it by three and you should get 48. So now to figure out the molar mass, we have to take each of these numbers and we need to add them all together. Um, so you can just grab your calculator and do that. You don't need to do this math in your head, um, but you should get around 122.8 you know, maybe six or something like that. Um, your rounding might be a little bit different than mine, but you should get around this number, um, and that is grams of the KClO3. All right, so you just look at your periodic table for each of these. The O you have to times by three, and then you're gonna add up all the numbers together. So number three, I'm not gonna do completely for you, but I'll show you kind of how you set it up. So you have C, you have H, and you have O. So you'll find the masses from the periodic table of C, of H, and of O, and then make sure that you times them by the little number that goes underneath. So um, you'll make sure you times, sorry, this thing keeps talking, popping up. All right, C you'll multiply by 12, and the H you'll do by 22, and then the O you'll do by um, 11. All right, so we use those little numbers and multiply them by the total mass that you find from your periodic table. All right, hopefully at the end when you do all of that, you will get around 342.3 grams of C12H22O11. So we're gonna be using these numbers in our equation below. All right, so now we're gonna look at number four. So number four, it says you will use 1.15 grams of potassium chlorate. Calculate the amount of sugar in grams needed to react exactly with the potassium chlorate. So we are going to start with our number. So you see you have 1.15 grams of potassium chlorate. So that's going to be your starting point. 1.15 grams of KClO3. That's your starting point. You notice that you're trying to get to grams of sugar. So because it's a gram to gram problem, you are gonna times it by three different fractions and we'll work on setting up those fractions. So up top here, you have grams of KClO3. So since it's right here, you know it needs to go on the bottom of your next fraction down below. So we're gonna get grams of KClO3 on the bottom. Now, in order to work our way towards finding grams of sugar, we need to first change it into moles. So our first step is to take grams of KClO3 and we're gonna change it into moles of KClO3 on top. All right, so to find our grams, 
This is where you go to your periodic table and you look up each mass, you times the O by 3, and you put in your total here. Now, we did this already in step 2, so you can just take the mass you got for step 2 and plug it in at the bottom there. So you should get 122.6. Again, your number might be a little bit different depending on how you rounded. All right, and then for our number of moles, remember our number of moles, if we're ever finding grams on our periodic table, it's always going to be for one. So just one mole of KCl3. So you'll notice now our grams are going to cancel out. So we have moles of KCl3, and we need to change that into moles of sugar. So we need to get to moles of sugar, then to get to grams of sugar. So the moles of KCl3, since it's up here, we're going to drop it on the bottom of your next fraction down below. So that's going to be moles of KCl3 down below. And again, we need to change that into the moles of sugar. All right, so to figure out these numbers, when it's a mole over mole, this is when we have to go up to your balanced chemical equation. And you have to look at the numbers in front of the KCl3 and the sugar. So in front of the KCl3, we have an 8. So we're going to have 8 moles of KCl3. And on the bottom part, uh, or on the top part with our sugar, it doesn't have a number by it, so we're just going to have 1. All right, so now you can see we've changed our moles into of KCl3 into moles of the sugar. And our final step is to change the moles of the sugar into grams of the sugar. And you know that you need to get grams on top because that's what we're trying to work towards. We're trying to work towards grams of sugar. And the moles go on the bottom because the moles were the thing on top of your last fraction right before it. So we'll cancel out our moles. We need to plug in our numbers here. So again, we already did this in number three. We already figured out the molar mass of sugar. So you can just plug that number into your equation, 342.3, and that's for every one mole since we used our periodic table. So now how you're gonna do this math is you're gonna take this number, you're gonna multiply it by one and divide it by 122.6. You're gonna multiply it by one, divide it by eight, multiply it by 342.3 and divide it by one. When you do all of that, you should get a number down here. I'll leave that up to you to figure out what it is. And remember that your units for this will be grams of C12H22O11. So make sure you include that in your answer. And like I said, number five and number six, you should be able to do with the other video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and hopefully this lab is kind of fun for you guys to watch.